getting started with the laser world show editor. Uh, after having configured the hardware interface, the show net interface, um, we start the software. We see the intro screen with uh, the different parts of the software, so we can directly head to the figure editor, to the live show window, to the timeline show window, or we can also directly go to the playlist. It's also possible to access the software options here. First of all, the most important part of the Lazy World Show Editor is the figure editor. The figure editor is the core window and you can access all other features from this core window later on. So we click on it here and you see this is the main window. Um, what you can see here is um, the live window access on this side, the timeline editor, effects, DMX control options. So the main important parts are accessible from this main window. To understand how Laser World Show Editor works, it's important to know more about the file structure behind it. So Laser World Show Editor basically um, consists of complete shows, but the shows are also linked to a physical file folder on the computer. So it's not an abstract file that contains all the different aspects of the show, but it's a folder where all the single frames and figures are stored into. So you can see all the, the, the frames and figures individually in that folder. You can put the music file in there, you can put the video file in there, uh, and everything is collected in this folder. So the folder is the most important thing to consider when starting um, making a new pattern or figure. What we want to do later is we want to export our own created frames as well to ILDA. So before we can do that, it's very important to do the proper permission settings um, for, the, for the whole Laser World Show Editor. To do so, we go on Options and we select the default right settings. So what we can see here, this is a good setting for allowing the export of ILDA frames later on. What you need to need to consider is that if you create a laser show and you have settings like this and you pass the laser show to another person, the person can change the show, they can upload it and anybody else can, can use it. So if you want to put any limitation on who can use the show, uh, you can enter a specific dongle number, but I suggest to do that later on when everything's been created. So a good thing is to start with these settings here, just allowing everything, and then before you hand the show or the figures to third party, you can still make limitations on these on this specific folder. This is possible later on. So this is just the general settings and I highly suggest to use these general settings to just not run into uh, problems later on. We do save settings and close window so the settings are preserved for next start of the software. If we don't save the settings, just close the window. The settings are preserved for this session but as soon as you restart the show editor, the settings get lost so it's important to just save the settings and close windows so they are preserved for next time. So what you can see here is we have a, uh, a file structure with different folders and for being able to export and to completely freely use our laser figures later uh, we need to create a brand new folder. This brand new folder must not contain any other frames or figures that you copied from another existing folder. Because if these 
figures have been in a folder that has been protected, then meaning copying these figures to the new folder puts the protection on the new folder as well. And if there is any protection, if there is any third-party content that you don't have permission to export to ILDA, you cannot export to ILDA and you see this one, say figure as ILDA file, is gray. And we cannot have that because uh, we want to have export, for example, for playback later on from the show net. And that's why we need to consider using a brand new file folder. So what we need is a new folder. To access the new folder, ah, here it is. I just created a new folder. You see that one here? So we're opening this new folder and everything we're doing now is happening in this new folder. So if we create a new figure, a new frame, and we save it, it's saved to this new folder. Uh, if we create a live show, all the live show settings are stored to this new folder, the same with the timeline show. So it's very important to understand the folder structure and the corresponding figures and frames. So we just want to make our first new figure and before we can start making a new figure we just need to click new figure otherwise it will not draw properly and then we make a left click on the type of drawing method we want to use. This time we want to do a rectangle. Just click and drag and release and you see we have a rectangle. If we want to save this, we just click save. And now it asks us, you see it's the folder here, up here. And it asks us for a name and we say rectangle and we save it. It saves it as HEB file. We, uh, we just saved it and on saving Lazy World Show switches back to the neutral figure. But when you, when you see the figure window you see there is one new figure saved to the figure window and it's our rectangle. If we click on it, it comes back to our edit area. Now we want to change something on this rectangle. For example, we want to make colored corners. This can be done by just using this button. Um, I left click on it and I select, for example, red color. I left click on it and I left click on the point of the, of the rectangle. So it's one corner point and as the corner point is responsible for the coloring, we can color two sides and two points are also colored. This is how we can color the lines of this rectangle. If we still want to preserve the white points in the corner, we can select the point tool, go back to white, just set a white point on top of the red one. So we still have the white points in the corner, we have the red lines here, and the rectangle is finished. We can now save this one so it's preserved and if we recall it, it's up here. Um, the most important thing to understand about Laser World Show is that it matters if you right click or left click. So most of these features here have right click options. So for example, if you go to the hexagon, now at this time it's a hexagon, you see it's a six written down, but if you right click on it, you can select the number of corners you want to do. So if we do a 50, 50 corners, and we make a new figure, and I draw with a left mouse click, um, it's important to enter the number of overlapping edges. It should be the same. It depends on, on what you want to do, but just leave it for now. We do 50 and that's fine for us. 
So what you can see is you have the different, the different points of the different corners of the 50 corners here. So it looks like a, like a circle, but it's not a circle. It's a multi-cornered polygon. So now I want to select all of these points, which is left click. And if I use my right mouse click, and this is important to understand, if you want to move all these points, use the right mouse click, and you can move the figure around. It's the right click, right mouse click. Now we've got it here, and we can also select multiple points here, for example, for recoloring. This way we can apply different colors to different points. It's super simple, super easy, and it's very, very easy to create your own new figure. Multi-color circle. Now you see we've got uh, two different figures available and we can select the very figure we want to edit or want to use. If you want to draw very precisely, you can change the grid size here. So if you, for example, add 2, you don't see any grid at all, you can add 5, for example, and you see there is a very, very detailed grid, and you can put points here and there, and uh, especially for drawing very specific, very detailed uh, graphics and animations, this is helpful to just make a, make a more detailed grid. So we're opening the rectangle we just worked with and we want to put some more dynamic to this one. So we, we add a new frame. At the moment it's just a static frame, so it's not a figure with there is no animation. Uh, but we want to have animation there, we want to have some movement, so what we do is we add a new frame. If we left click on new frame, it just makes a blank new frame, but we want to have a new frame that is exactly like the old one. So we right click on new frame and what you can see here, the first frame is like this and the second one as well. Now I want to do the animation part. I go to the second frame, I select this point, right mouse click, move that one, select that point, right mouse click, move it here, okay? Now I do an, another new frame, I also again cl right click on new frame and this copied, that's the first frame, second frame, third frame, so it copied the third frame for me. I move that one, for example, here, that one, for example, here, and that one I do here, and that one I do here. Okay? And now I need to, uh, now I want to, for, first of all, I want to save it as a, a new one, rectangle, morph. So we get this one here. That's the normal rectangle and that's rectangle morph. Um, the first frame I have shall be the the last one as well. Um, this is very important to, to understand. I, I just copy these points and I make a blank new frame as last frame. So that one I left click so it's a blank frame I just paste the first frame as well. So, just walking through the frames is first frame, second frame, third frame, fourth frame. What we do now is we make an animation of all these frames. We make morph all. This is important to understand about the, the smoothness of the movement. The higher the number, the smoother, but also the slower the morphing happens. I just I just want to have a smooth m morphing effect, so I put 300 morphed frames and I do OK. And what happened now, you see there is many, 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 many frames that have been created. 
At the moment you cannot see what happens, so what we need to do is we need to add the speed it shall be played. So I put 20 for example. And I do the simulation. Whoa, the simulation is going crazy, you see, it's it's rotating and everything's happening pretty fast. Um, why does why does this happen? This happens due to the effects that have been applied. There is a different tutorial on the effects, but I just open it up here and reset the rotation and close the window again. And what you see now is it's all morphing. It's moving very slowly and it's morphing. And you see the rectangle is distorting and it's morphing. So the points we're using are just moving from one edge to the other edge and just moving to the different positions. Um, that's why I copied the original pattern to the different frames. So I didn't, I didn't redraw them newly but I just copied the existing um, the existing points. That's important to understand so the morphing happens smoothly and the program doesn't uh, need to guess which point shall be morphed to what target point. So these were the basics uh, for understanding the Laserville Show Editor core window, the figure editor. Um, there is more things to learn about the figure editor. There's many many things um, to understand about. So please check on the manual if you run into any troubles, if you have questions. There's many hints in the manual and there will be more tutorials on how to use Laser World Show Editor, how to use certain tools, how to use certain effects. Uh, so please uh, check our channel in the future for more details.